Hi everyone. Um, Dr. Kopja asked me to share with you guys some ways that either Web 2.0 uh, mobile apps or gaming is sort of affecting um, the way that I learn or helping me in my life. And so since I'm unable to talk on Wimba, I thought I would just go ahead and make this video um, and share some of these ways with you. Um, so I'm calling this Web 2.0 and mobile apps, changing the way I teach, research, and cook. The first one I'm going to share with you is Google Documents. Um, I've been using Google Docs for a number of years, and I use it both in terms of a Web 2.0 tool and as a mobile technology. Um, as a Web 2.0 tool, I use it with students that I teach in Edit 2000, um, and I use it in a number of ways. So I'm going to show you just a few examples. Um, one of the things I do in Google Docs is organize my collections. So if I go to Spring 2012, these are some documents that I've created for a class that I'm teaching now. Um, one of the things I might do with Google Docs is ask students to give me information. For example, I ask them to send me their WordPress sites so that I would be able to access their blogs. Um, so I created a doc asking for their name, their URL, and then I just asked them, I was curious, you know, uh, to rate their ease in creating a WordPress site. Um, so this easily allows me to go in for every student and look at their, their WordPress site. Um, so this is one way that I use Google Docs. Another is that sometimes I ask students to share what they think um, criteria for an assignment might be. Uh, recently, we were talking about what makes a good blog post comment. Um, and so this was a document I shared with the entire class and they got into groups and actually added and created their own criteria for what a substantive comment should look like on a WordPress site. Okay. And then one other application I found especially useful in Google Docs is keeping track of grades. Um, just for privacy I'm not going to actually show you their grades but I create um, one main Google Doc where I record students' grades that feeds into these other documents that students can then view, and it's private between them and myself. Another Web 2.0 tool that I use quite frequently is WordPress. Um, I actually use it to post blogs for my class each day, um, and also as a content management system. So this is a blog posting from uh, January 30th. This was this past Monday. Um, and we were learning about creating a blogging community. So WordPress is a place where I'll, I'll put links for them that we might go to during class. Um, I can post pictures from conversations that we've had in prior classes. Um, I can also insert videos, um, such as tutorials, for helping them create their uh, WordPress site. Um, in terms of a management system, um, it's a place where I can post how-tos, you know, how to, for example, um, create a WordPress site, take a screenshot. Um, I'll post videos sometimes. Um, I use it as a place to post, for example, their blog sites so students can go in and look at any of their classmates' sites. Um, I post criteria for the projects that we'll be turning in in class. Um, it's also a place where we can uh, pull together a collection of Web 2.0 resources we might use. Um, so this is basically how I use uh, WordPress for my class. Um, in terms of a mobile technology that I find myself using on a daily basis, um, GoodReader. Uh, GoodReader is basically a PDF reader on my iPad, and I use it to annotate and also share annotated documents, um, and it works great in correlation with Dropbox. Um, for some reason, you now have to pay for GoodReader, uh, but when I bought it, it was free, or downloaded it. Um, so you can see some of the things it allows you to do. You can actually highlight text, you can write comments to yourself. Um, it's really nice for allowing you to organize your documents um, and storing manuals here. Um, 
So this has become something I have relied on heavily just as a student. Okay. Um, and then in terms of cooking, I've been using all recipes for a number of years. And one of the things I really love about this is that I can keep a recipe box and sort of tag my favorite recipes. Um, I also like this because I can read comments from other people who have cooked with these recipes. Uh, sometimes they'll say it was too sweet, I didn't add as much sugar. Um, and the really great part about this is that I can then pull it up on my iPad or my iPod in the kitchen. Um, so here you can see my recipe list. Um, so these are some of the recipes I really uh, have enjoyed finding. Um, I have not used this to its full advantage by posting my own recipes, um, but I intend to do that one, one day. And then the last thing that Dr. Kopja asked me to talk about was pearl trees. I just started using pearl trees, what, a month ago? Um, but I found this to be really great for organizing um, some of the resources I find online. Um, I was recently doing a project where I had to find um, a grant and practice writing a grant for class. Um, and so I was able to sort of organize grant ideas in a web, in a, very, in a, in a nice visual way. Um, and the other thing I really like about pearl trees is the opportunity to go out and find other pearl trees that might be related. Um, for example, if you click on related interest, What's really cool is um, you can kind of see what are some other people. Let's let's look at uh, education. So I can see this person has a similar blog to me, um, but then if I sort of move out, well, that's not really working. Um, to sort of see, wow, here's some other things I might be interested in based on what I've been collecting um, in my own pearl tree. Um, you can see there are a lot of <laughs> educational tools here. Um, when I first started, I was finding a lot of sewing projects. I'm not seeing as many now. Um, but this is a really neat way to sort of see what other people are tagging online. So this is basically how I've been using Web 2.0 and mobile apps, and it really has changed the way I teach, research, and cook.